Good evening my friends. Today is the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time and our Gospel reading today is uh, taken from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 12 verses 32 to 48. So a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belonging and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an exhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moat destroy. For where your treasure is, there will also your heart be. Gear your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant upon his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have left his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, in this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants, to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put that servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant say to himself, My master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant master will come on an unexpected day and at a known hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will, but it did not make the preparations, nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Laudator Jesus Christus, let me offer to you some of my personal reflection on the Gospel reading that we had today. Jesus in his Gospel emphasized a very important point in our Christian in our profession of our faith and he emphasized the last judgment we always believe as Christians that in the end there will be the resurrection of the body and there will be the last judgment and that Jesus Christ will come again the second time in glory and he will sit as judge to judge both the living and the dead and this kind of scenario or this kind of teachings sometimes is very difficult to comprehend. This is owing to the limitations of our awareness and consciousness. Being humans, sometimes it is incomprehensible to us the things that are to come. That's why St. Paul even said to the Corinthians that ear has not heard, eye have not seen all the promises that the Lord has given to those who will be saved. So meaning to say, though we believe there is heaven, though we believe that there is a reward in the second life, in the second coming of the Son of God, and yet we, are, we cannot comprehend it. That's why in this parable, Jesus used a lot of imagery or metaphor 
and parable in order to um, help us understand, in order to help us to have faith in this important doctrine. That's why Jesus said that. that uh, that's why um, Saint Peter, hearing this parable, said, "Ask our Lord." Is this parable meant for us or is it meant for everyone? And Jesus answered, Who is that faithful servant? So meaning to say, this is, this parable is meant for every people, for everyone who believe in Jesus Christ. That's why in we have to understand that our life on earth is temporal. Meaning to say, we are not going to live here forever we might achieve some personal success or we might achieve or attain some earthly wealth but all of this will fade away when we die we will all leave this behind and we will not even benefit with this even even in the afterlife that's why jesus said we should store true riches because this true riches is the one that will that will give us benefit in the second life and what is this treasure that our Lord is telling us? The Lord is telling us that we should acquire a spiritual wealth. Because when we obey the commandments of God, when we do good to our neighbor, when we visit the sick, when we comfort those who are in prison, and when we feed the hungry, that is the kind of treasure that we will be accumulating. Because according to our Lord, if we are, if we are rich in good works, all of this will be paid in eternal life that's why we have to to prepare for it and one important aspect of this uh, reading and as i reflected is the importance of preparations because there are two kinds of servants the one who is uh, diligent the other one who who assumes everything who, who, who is presumptuous that's why jesus said we should always be prepared because we do not know the time of the last judgment. And Jesus, um, in, in this gospel, give us two illustrations. The first one is the illustration of the thief, and the second one is the bridegroom. So he said that, like a thief in the night, the judgment of the Lord will come at unexpected time. So that's why, if we are the master of the house, we should be prepared always because we do not know when the thief will break into our home. So in the same way, if the coming of the Lord is unexpected and unannounced, we should always be prepared. We should not presume. So pre pre preparation means living a good life, remembering the commandments of the Lord, doing the commandments of the Lord. This is the best way to prepare for His coming. Then, the second imagery given to us by our Lord is that of the bridegroom. So, if we are the bride, if, if we are the bridesmaid, or, or if we are the, the maid or the, the servant in charge for the coming of the bridegroom, we should be prepared and we should always be prepared to meet the bridegroom. And Jesus was using the uh, traditional um, wedding ceremony or uh, traditional wedding customs in Israel at the time wherein the bridegroom would come unexpected and the servants should always be prepared because they have to meet the bridegroom way ahead to, to, to lead him to the house of the bride. So these are the two important images that our Lord has given to us in order to help us understand and to drive into our hearts and into our consciousness the need to be prepared for the coming of the Lord because it is something that we, which is unexpected. And the last judgment is a reality mentioned in the scriptures, believed in by the prophets and by all Christians and Jews and sometimes the Muslims, they also believe in the second coming in the, in the, in the last judgment. And that is a common belief among the monotheistic, uh, monotheistic religion. And we have to wait and to pre be prepared for that. And in our um, in our catechism, it is said that this this last judgment is manifested in two ways. First, when we die, because when we die, the judgment has already come. And second, in the actual physical coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, when the throne will be set up to judge everyone, 
both living and dead. And this is really a very um, momentous event. And we pray that uh, we should be always be faithful and be prepared. Because if we are always ready, when, when the last judgment would come, we would always be confident to be at the throne of mercy, the throne of judgment, and the throne of mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. For us, for what we do, that is what we will be judged upon us. Because it is said in the Bible that uh, there is the book of life, and we should be happy that our names are written in the book of life. Because in the last judgment, this book will be opened, and there will be an accounting of all that we have done. And let us always pray for the mercy of the Lord, that the Lord will grant us the grace to be faithful to Him, to live a good life, and to be a light in this dark world, so that others might also be enticed and be convinced to obey and follow the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. So, for this evening, let us end our reflection with the sign of the cross as our acknowledgement and short prayer to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.